The Kraft Foods Company presents The Great Gildersleeve. <laughs> yeah. It's The Great Gildersleeve, starring Harold Perry, brought to you by the Kraft Foods Company, makers of parquet margarine and a complete line of famous quality food products. Christmas week. Christmas to New Year's. These are the times that try men's souls. All the things you rushed out and bought the day before Christmas come back to plague you the day after. I don't know how it's been at your house. You probably weren't foolish enough to buy the little darling a set of drums. But at our house, all week long, it's been nothing but... <laughs> now, Leroy. Now, my boy. Leroy. Leroy. I'm trying to do some figuring here. Could you possibly pursue your musical studies at some other time, my boy? Well, gosh, what's the use of having drums? Why did you give them to me if you... Don't ask me why I gave them to you. <laughs> I don't know. I must have been out of my head. I'm sorry, Leroy, if I seem a little impatient. But this is very difficult work I'm doing here. I'm trying to add up my accounts. So if you could find something else to do... Will you play me a game of electric football? There's your sister. Why don't you play something with her? Play with her? If I ask you something, will you say yes, please? Will you please say yes? Well, now, wait a minute. I was nice about Christmas. I stayed home when you told me to. But this is different. New Year's Eve isn't like Christmas Eve, so please say I can do it. Please say yes. My dear, if you'd calm down and explain what it is you want me to say yes to. Oh, oh well, it's really a very nice place. Everybody says it's very nice. It's not run by gangsters or anything. And it'd be a chance to wear my new laughing jacket and my silver slippers. They'd be just perfect. So can I, please? Leroy, do you know what your sister's talking about? Does anybody? <laughs> now, Unky, don't be a tease. Say I can go. I'll just die if you don't. They have a band and favors and everything. And it's the grand opening, New Year's Eve. And I've never been anywhere on New Year's Eve. So can I? I take it, my dear, that you're asking my permission to go out this evening. Oh, that's right. To the Blue Cockatoo. You know, it's out on Route 28. Is that the place that used to be Julius's Hofbrau? <laughs> the place they closed down last year? Oh, but it's, it's under all new management. It's lovely now. Everybody says so. They're opening tonight. And Marshall's got reservations. His father got them for him, so can I go? My dear, you know what I think of Marshall Bullard. Well, you don't have to go with him. <laughs> Please, Anki, it's Marshall's last evening at home. He has to go back to school tomorrow. Thank heaven for that, my dear. I wish they'd keep him there. Well, can I go or not? All right, go ahead. Pay no attention to what I think. I'm nobody. I just pay the bills around here, that's all. <laughs> oh, Anki, you're a darling. Yes, yes. Leroy, oh, did you hear that? He said I could go. Oh, I could change. Get out of now. Good, make her quit. What's the matter? She kissed me. What did I do? <laughs> Still figuring, Leroy. Gosh, haven't you got the answer yet? Almost, not quite. Certainly takes you long enough. This covers a whole year, my boy. Now let me alone or I'll never get it done. When you're finished, will you play me a game of electric football? We'll see. That's what you always say. Yes or no? No, by George, I won't. <laughs> I played electric football with you all day Christmas and every night this week. I'm sick of it. Now stop bothering me. Um, yes? What can I do? Leroy, how can you ask that? Here you got all this stuff for Christmas. Go out and play with it. All I really want to play is electric football. Well, find somebody else then, but get out of here and stop bothering me. If I'm quiet, can I stay? If you're quiet. Oh, where was I? Oh, 51 and 3 is 54. And 2 is 56. Honk. And 7 is 63. <laughs> Eight is 71, and two is 73. Unc! Just a second, Leroy. Oh, Uncle Mark, do you mind if I... Quiet! Can't you see Unc is busy? I'm sorry. 
<laughs> well, there it is. As of the close of business, December the 31st, 1945, flat broke. <laughs> how do I do it? No matter how much I earn or how much I spend, it's always the same. Oh, well, at least I'm holding my own. <laughs> You mean we're in trouble? Oh, no more than any other year. Are we poor, Uncle? Just comfortably poor, I'd say, Leroy. Mr. Gilfrey, excuse me. Uh, yes, Bertie? About this evening. You'll be going out, I suppose, New Year's Eve. Well, I don't know. To tell the truth, I haven't really got around to making any plans, Bertie. I've been so busy, I sort of let it slide. You'll be staying in, then? Well, I haven't really made up my mind yet. I'll let you know. Well, Uncle Lord, if you're thinking of going out anywhere this evening, you'd better get busy. You may be right. Why, the blue cockatoo was sold out for New Year's Eve a week ago. If you think Christmas was bad... Oh, don't go anywhere, Uncle. You and I can have a swell time right here. Doing what? Playing electric football. <laughs> we can have a swell... That settles it. I'm not going to spend New Year's Eve playing electric football. Hello. Leela? Rocky? What you doing tonight, Leela? New Year's Eve, you know. We ought to... Oh... Oh, you are, huh? That's too bad. Well, Happy New Year, anyway. Hello, Eve? Throckmorton Gildersleeve. I was wondering if you had any plans for this evening. I thought we might just... Oh. That's too bad. Wish I'd called you sooner. Well, Happy New Year, Eve. Miss Proudfoot? I don't know if you remember me, Miss Proudfoot, but this is Throckmorton Gildersleeve. I met you one time at Floyd Munson's. In the kitchen. I was wondering how you'd like to go out this evening and... Oh, you yeah. have. Nuts. I mean, Happy New Year. Judge? Guilty. Say, how'd it be if you and I got a couple of girls went out and painted the town a little? We could... Oh, you have, eh? Who is she? <laughs> Yourself. <laughs> Phew. Now what am I gonna do? Spend near New Year's Eve alone? Hey, wait a minute. <laughs> Yeah, here, Bertie. Grab some of these things. My goodness, where all have you been? Drugstore, delicatessen, every place. I'm going to have to ask you to help me here, Bertie. We've got to work fast. Uh, Marjorie left yet? No, sir. She's just getting ready upstairs. Yeah, that's good. Now, I'll tell you what I want you to do. You set the table nice and pretty, Bertie. Let's see. Uh, Marjorie, Marshall, Leroy, and me. Yeah, better set it for four. But I thought Miss Marjorie and her friend was going out to dinner. Now, don't ask questions, Bertie. Just do as I tell you, and quickly. Yes, sir. She's got a lot of favors here. Paper hats and snappers and so on. You can decorate it with ease. Oop, that must be Marshall. Well, you get the idea, Bertie. You fix everything, nice and pretty, huh? Yes, sir. I'll just close these double doors so they can't see into the dining room. We want it to be a surprise. Yeah, the young brat. Can't he keep his shirt on? Oh, Uncle Mort, is that Marshall? Don't you worry, my dear. I'll entertain him. You get down. I'll be right there. And I'll do be nice to him. Uh, just leave it to your Uncle Throckmorton. Yeah, the young twerp. Well, well, Marshall, come right in. Yes, indeed. Marjorie will be ready in a jiffy. Good evening, sir. Here, let me take your overcoat. Oh, don't bother. I'll just... That is an overcoat, isn't it? <laughs> let me hang it up for you. Oh, we'll be going right out. Oh, here's Marjorie now. Hello, Marshall. Say, you look wonderful. Oh, thank you. Yeah, very pretty, my dear. Very pretty. Uh, so you uh, young people were going out this evening, eh? Why, Uncle Mort, you know we were. Well, it's pretty cold out. Pretty nasty. I just came in myself. You couldn't drag me out again, no, sir. Oh, we don't care how cold it gets, do we, Marshal? No, we'll keep warm. <laughs> 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 yes. You were planning on going to some nightclub, were you? Uh, yes, sir, we have... Well, I a... told you, Uncle Mort. Marshal has reservations for the blue cockatoo. The blue... Oh, yes, yeah, so you did, so you did. Ever been to a nightclub on New Year's Eve before, either of you? Well, no, sir. This is the first time... That horrible? I... Just horrible. 
crowded, noisy, services bad, people falling all over each other. Oh, we don't care, do we, Marshal? No, sir, I don't know a worse place in the world than a nightclub on New Year's Eve. Now, I was just wondering if we couldn't all have more fun if we stayed right here at home. Uncle Moore! Now, wait a minute. I've got a surprise for you. You haven't seen the way I've got the dining room fixed up. All right, Bertie, you can open the doors if you're ready. There. How do you like that? You see? Paper hats, confetti, noisemakers, everything. Look. <laughs> Some fun, eh? What do you say, Marshal? Well, it looks swell, Mr. Gildersleeve, but... What do you think, Marjorie? I think it's a dirty trick. Marjorie? You told me we could go out, and now you pull this on us. My dear, it's entirely up to you. Far be it for me to put any pressure on you. Nothing could be further from my mind. If you want to go out, go ahead. If you want to leave us here, Leroy and me, on New Year's Eve alone, with all these little tokens that we tried so hard to please you with, go ahead, go ahead. We'll try to understand. What do you think, Marge? Oh, Anki, I wish you could come with us and be in on the fun. Yeah, it's too bad the reservation is only for two. No, my dear, run along and have your fun. Don't mind me. All I ask is at midnight when the band plays all Lang Syne, give a thought to your old uncle, because he'll be thinking of you. Oh, Anki, happy new year. Happy new year, my dear. Uh, happy New Year, Marge. <laughs> happy New Year, sir. Well, shall we go, Marge? Goodbye, Anki. Bye. <laughs> well, Bertie, they're gone Yes, sir, guess it didn't work What's that? Oh, <laughs> yes No, I guess not Uh, Mr. Gilsey, you don't mind if I go out later after I finish the dishes? No, go ahead, Bertie Everybody else is going, you might as well go too But, Mr. Gilsey, how about you? How you going to see the new year in? I shall probably play a game of electric football, Bertie For all Lang Syne <laughs> The Great Gildersleeve will be back in just a moment. Have you folks on the Gildersleeve show made your New Year's resolutions, Mr. Lang? Oh, we certainly have. The whole cast, the writers and producers, have resolved to give our radio listeners even finer entertainment in 1946. And uh, I personally have resolved to win more friends for Parquet Margarine. Well, that shouldn't be so hard to do, Mr. Lang. I'm a regular user of Parquet Margarine. And any spread that tastes so good and can be bought so economically is sure to keep winning a lot of new friends. That's right. Why, did you know that Parquet Margarine was one of the fastest-growing brands in America before the war? No, I didn't. But I do know that Parquet is very popular today because it's often so hard to get at my neighborhood food store. Yes, Parquet Margarine is more popular than ever. It's winning friends right along because it tastes so good on bread, hot toast, waffles, and pancakes. And with Parquet's flavor still unmatched, I expect that resolution of mine to win more friends for Parquet Margarine is going to be easy to keep. Be sure to try delicious, economical Parquet soon. That's P-A-R-K-A-Y, Parquet Margarine, made by the Kraft Foods Company. Now let's get back to the Great Gildersleeve as he drags himself through the dying hours of the old year. It's after supper now, but the situation appears unchanged. Come to me, my holly, holly bird. Ah. Leroy! I need to learn the lyrics. My boy, for the rest of 1945, please, no drum. Then go to bed. It's almost time anyway. On New Year's Eve? I thought I could stay up till 12. Well, we've got to think of your health, you know. I'm healthy. What if I should just happen to wake up at 12 o'clock? Well, then you may celebrate a little. Oh, boy, what can I do? You can say Happy New Year and then go back to bed. <laughs> Is that all? That is all. Now go to bed. Oh, what is it, Bertie? I'm going out now, if you don't mind. Not at all. Have a good time. Happy New Year. Thank you, Miss Gilsey. Same to you. The house is all locked up front and back, so you don't have to do anything. Well, that's good. Well, good night, Miss Gilsey. Good night, Bertie. Um, wait a minute. Where are you going? To a party. Kind of a combination dance and frolic. Well, 
Sounds like a good combination. <laughs> sure is. Combined so good last New Year's, one man didn't come home for three days. <laughs> Well, you don't say. Yes, sir. Well, good night, Miss Gipsy. Young people, old people, every kind of people there, I suppose? Yes, sir. Cradle to the grave. Young folks with jitterbug, I expect, and middle-aged folks. Well, guess they'll jitterbug, too. The old folks get a waltz every two hours. <laughs> Bye, George. I better keep going. I don't want to miss anything. No, I guess not. Well, good night. Good night, Miss Gipsy. Happy New Year. Happy New Year, Bertie. <laughs> Bertie has more fun than I do. Yes, sir, a lot more fun. I'd like to be going to a dance tonight myself. Say, I wonder what my secretary is doing tonight. I don't like the idea of going out with her, but just this once might not do any harm. I could call up and say, Bessie. Oh, no, I remember now. Out of town for Wednesday. Oh, well. Oh, doorbell. Well. I wonder who this could be. Leela, maybe. Eve. Peavy. Hello, Mr. Gillespie. <laughs> Happy New Year. Well, the same to you, old man, and many of them. Come on in and have a Coke. Oh, I can't stay, I'm afraid. I, I just dropped by to bring you this little 1946 calendar with compliments to the pharmacy. A calendar? Well, just what I needed, too. Well, at least come in for a second while I look at it. Well, if you insist. Say, what a beautiful calendar. The alchemist. Yeah, those are the fellows that used to try to make gold out of lead. Never got anywhere with it, not that I ever heard. No, but they were the scientists of their day. Look at them. Standing there with his test tubes and his crucibles. Fine picture. Yeah, I think it makes up into a nice little calendar. Uh, for the family trade, that is. Oh, perfect. The calendar man tried to sell me a picture of a girl with black silk stockings. Oh, well, that wouldn't do for your customers, people. That's what I say. Too bad, though. <laughs> Evie, you're an old rascal. Well, no, I wouldn't say that. Picture never hurt anybody. You uh, all alone this evening? Mr. Yes, Peavy. I decided I didn't feel like whooping and hollering this New Year's Eve. Decided to spend a quiet evening at home for a change. Is that a fact? Yes, sir. Stay at home with a good book. That's the way to spend New Year's Eve. Well, that's one way. <laughs> Or with a friend, of course. Now, why don't you sit down here with me and take it easy? The fact is, I've got to be getting home to Mrs. Peavy. Well, sure, but there's no hurry, is there? <laughs> Nobody but a bachelor could say that. <laughs> I'm sorry, but I've got to be running along. Wait, Peavy. What are you doing to celebrate New Year's, you and Mrs. Peavy? Well, she's like you. She likes to spend the evening quietly. Perfect. Bring her over here and we'll all celebrate it together. Well, I don't think... Nonsense, Peavy. I've got some paper hats and some nice new horns. We can all drink a few Cokes or something. Huh? How about it? Sounds noisy. All right, forget the horns then. We'll be as quiet as mice. We'll celebrate the quietest New Year's Eve in history. Mr. Gildersleeve, I hesitate to say this, but you're talking like a darn fool. What do you mean? Well, if I were you, I wouldn't sit here with a Coke and a paper hat. I'd go out somewhere and make whoopee. Well, why don't you? Well, Mrs. Peavy is against it. But you're a free agent. Go get yourself a girl, man. Go out and see the town. <laughs> Don't think I haven't tried, Peavy. Tried every girl I know. Well, in that case, you might as well go to bed right now. <laughs> Good night, Mr. Gillespie, and Happy New Year. <laughs> Looks like I'm stuck. New Year's Eve and not a friend that'll have a cup of kindness with me. Not a friend in the whole world. That's how I'm winding up 1945. Alone. I could be dying and who'd know it. It'll probably be just the same when I am dying. Nobody around to say a kind word. Nobody to soothe my fevered brow. Gildersleeve, let him die. Sure, let him die like a dog. Gosh, I wonder if I've got a temperature right now. Uh, mustn't get ideas like that. Can't just sit here moping, though. Try the radio, maybe, and hear a little news. Can't believe it. 
Always thought I was popular. But living in a fool's paradise, I guess. People just can't stand my personality. And now, ladies and gentlemen, we're just about ready with the first of our series of transcontinental New Year's Eve celebrations. Here we are in Times Square, New York City. And when I say that Times Square is teeming with humanity, I don't want you to think I'm merely coining a phrase. Hmm. Must be almost midnight back there. I asked one of the traffic cops how big the crowd was, and his guess was 200,000. Oh, looks more like a million to me. What a dope. A million people couldn't get in Times Square. Anyway, it's just a few seconds before midnight, and all these thousands of faces are looking up towards a big clock. They're waiting for the end of 1945. And here it is! What a way to celebrate. Childish. Yes, sir, 1945 is all over in Manhattan, and New York is giving 1946 a big hello. I'll try to get a typical citizen here to tell you how he feels about it. I beg your pardon, sir, but how do you like 1946 so far? Lousy. Are you talking to me, boss? Yes, sir. Would you like to tell our listeners how you like 1946 so far? Best little old year I ever had so far. I see. And the young lady with you. Oh, boy, I wish you could see her, folks. How does she feel about it? How do you feel, honey? Well, when I'm with you, honey. How can they put that kind of drivel on the air? <laughs> well. Happy New Year, Throckmorton. Oh, it's you, is it, Judge? What happened to your date? Well, I'd rather not speak of it, if you don't mind. But if you're busy... And not particularly. Come on in. Thank you. Throw your hat and coat any place. Come on in and have a Coke. Very kind of you, old man. What about your girl? Didn't she show up? Oh, certainly she showed up. I took her to the gold room at the Hotel Summerfield. Well, it's still pretty early. I'd rather not discuss it, Gilly. Well, suit yourself. <laughs> I'll hear all about it tomorrow from whoever was at the gold room. Dag nabbit, I'm afraid you will. Well, I suppose I might as well tell you what happened so you get the straight of it. Sure, go ahead, Judge. Well, I had a table at this place, and the young woman and myself were having a pleasant time, chatting and so on. Till a sailor appeared. <laughs> she uh, seemed to be acquainted with him. Yes. Yeah. The sailor asked her to dance. So, not wishing to quarrel with the armed forces, I made no protest. Yes, I see. However, after the fifth dance, I felt that I'd done my duty. <laughs> I remarked to the young woman, I thought it was my turn. And? She slapped my face and walked out with the sailor. Yeah. <laughs> I thought I might expect a little sympathy. Oh, I'm sympathetic, Judge. Believe me, I am only... <laughs> Fine friend, I must say. I'm sorry, Horace. Honestly, I'm sorry, but that's women for you. Come on, sit down and forget it. I certainly like to, but I'm afraid I'll hear plenty about it tomorrow. Anybody mentions it to me, Judge, I'll punch him right in the nose. Here, have a drink. Thanks, Gilda. Uh, certainly glad you came by, old man. I've been sitting here feeling sorry for myself. Sitting here alone all evening. I'd begun to think maybe there was something the matter with me. Something wrong with my personality. By George, I don't know why you should think there's anything wrong with your personality, old man. You've got plenty of it. Oh, you really think so? I do, sincerely. Good old Horace. Here's to you, old man. Happy New Year. Happy New Year. Yes, sir. When Leela Ransom, a girl I've been engaged to, mind you, but she thinks so little of me, she won't even save me New Year's Eve. Well, makes a fellow wonder, that's all. Oh, don't be silly. Why, Leela thinks more of you in two minutes than she does about any other man in ten years. You're a he-man. Strong, masculine personality. <laughs> and yet you know how to handle women. Yeah, I guess you're right. <laughs> guess Leela was just standing me up tonight to make me jealous. Yeah. May I fill up your glass? No, not yet. Thank you, thank you. You know, Throckmorton, having that girl walk out on me tonight was a bit of a blow to my ego. Quite a blow. I had the feeling that she found me attractive. She laughed at the little things that I said about the menu. She laughed when I showed her that stunt, you know, with the spoon and the salt cellar. <laughs> I thought that we were getting on splendidly. Do you suppose I seemed old to her? Oh, no, Horace. 
Believe me, any woman would guess you weren't a day over 55. Well, I'm only 62. You certainly don't show it. I mean, you look lots younger, Horace. Yes, sir. The way you carry yourself. The spring in your step. The sparkle in your eye. I've seen women look at you when they walk down the street, Judge. You have? You look recently? Plenty of times. <laughs> <laughs> women. They need us more than we need them. Have another Coke, Judge. I'm certainly glad you dropped in, Horace. Thank you. Yes, sir. Hey, the old tack factory. Happy New Year. Happy New Year. Oh, wait a minute. I forgot the paper hat. <laughs> For goodness sake, a regular party. Here, Judge, you take the red hat. I look better in green. Don't kill me. You certainly look funny. You ought to see yourself, Horace. Look like a tomato. <laughs> Here, blow a horn. Blow two if you've got the wind. Good old acquaintance be forgot and, and never, never brought, brought to mind. mind. Hey, yo, happy New Year! Leroy, get back in bed. Happy New Year. Happy New Year. We'll take a cup of kindness yet for all lang syne. What a pair of characters. <laughs> We'll hear from the great Gildersleeve again in just a few moments. A short while ago, I was speaking to a lady who said she can't always get parquet margarine these days at her favorite food store. And the simple explanation is this. Quality spreads for bread are in big demand everywhere. That's especially true, I know, of parquet margarine, the quality spread made by the Kraft Foods Company. Millions prefer parquet margarine to any other brand because it's still unmatched for flavor. And Kraft wants to assure you that everything possible is being done to keep dealers supplied, to distribute all available parquet both fairly and equitably. So if you can't buy parquet the first time, please try again, won't you? Chances are your dealers soon will have a new supply on hand. Insist on P-A-R-K-A-Y, parquet margarine, made by Kraft. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, the United States Treasury has asked us to announce that the sale of savings bonds will be continued now that the war is over. This means that those of us who have been participating in payroll savings plans can go right on laying up a nest egg for the future, at the same time helping to control runaway prices. You can still get F and G bonds as well as the E bonds, which most people bought during the war. The return is still at the same high rate, $4 at maturity, for every three that you invest. Might be a good New Year's resolution to buy U.S. Treasury savings bonds regularly. Good night and a happy New Year. The Great Gilder Slave is played by Harold Perry. It is written by John Whedon and Sam Moore. The music is by Jack Beacon. This is John Lang speaking for the Kraft Foods Company and inviting you to listen in again next week for the further adventures of The Great Gildersleeve. If you're planning a gay New Year's party, liven the foods on your buffet with a taste-tingling flavor of Kraft salad mustard. Your guests are sure to like this tangy, golden Kraft salad mustard blended into tasty appetizers, relishes, and sandwich spreads, or in a delicious filling for deviled eggs. For those who like a sharper tang, there's Kraft mustard with nippy horseradish added. So be sure to buy both kinds. Ask for Kraft horseradish mustard and Kraft salad mustard when you shop tomorrow. <laughs> This is the National Broadcasting Company.